Welcome to the RC3. Hello and welcome at the Franconian stage. Sorry for the delay, we had some technical problems. Uh, we have to get used to it. Um, yeah, I, I want to present you uh, an interesting talk from Miro. He talks about uh, names. And if you think about names, names can have a first name, last name, middle name, uh, prefix, postfix, but oops think about encoding hmm. could be difficult and um, some of the difficulties that Miro um, experiences um, he will tell us about it so um, welcome Miro I'm glad to hear your talk thank you very much so hello everyone my name is uh, Miros Miroslav Shredivi. Shredivi, no, 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 that's wrong. No, that's still wrong. There's still some character is wrong. No, no, that's still the wrong encoding. No, 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 no. Ah, yes, now, now it works. So my name is Miroslav Shredivi. And what I hear quite often is that my name is unfortunately invalid. That cannot be true. Miroslav Shedivi, this is how you write it, this is how you pronounce it uh, with IPA, and if you have the standard keyboard layout and you use the Kopos key, you can type it uh, uh, as well. Um, what I'm going to speak about today, I'm going to speak about names um, in IT, in programming. Uh, Python is just an example programming language. Uh, if you are using a different one, it may very probably apply uh, by the same extent or a little bit differently. It, I would be interested to hear what are your experiences. I'm going to speak about strings and bytes, about encoding, about normalizing, case folding, sorting, regular expressions, and about the names on the web, on the web forms, uh, on in the databases, uh, how they are formed, how they consist of different parts, uh, prefix, uh, first, middle, last, suffix names, and about the allowed characters. So how you should uh, prepare or program your app that it works with the names of people uh, correctly and without problems. In Python 3, now we have uh, strings and bytes that are two different uh, objects or types. Um, strings uh, consist of uh, characters, so these are actually the characters that are used uh, to write in some language, and uh, we have uh, more than one million different code points that are in Unicode. Um, and these strings are only in memory, in the working memory. So if you read something from a file or over network, it will come as bytes, because byte is the standard old 256 different possibilities of eight bits that you have in a byte. Uh, but as soon as you read it uh, in a Python, you convert it to a string, because as we are going to see, uh, one character can consist uh, of uh, several bytes, because there are ma many more than 256 uh, different possible characters. Then in the memory, you work with those strings, and at the end, you convert it again to bytes when you want to uh, save it uh, to a disk uh, file or you want to send it uh, over network. So uh, if your name is uh, Chuck Norris, you don't need any encodings. But uh, now, of course, the byte or the string uh, Chuck Norris uh, will be encoded uh, into bytes using the dot .encode uh, method. And the other way around your bytes, you can decode them back to Chuck Norris. Both look the same. Uh, in Python 3, the default encoding is UTF-8, and uh, Chuck Norris looks the same in UTF-8 or in as the original characters, so there is no change. Uh, you see that the Chuck Norris is 12 characters or 12 bytes when it is uh, encoded as uh, UTF-8. If uh, you are from Germany and your last name is Müller, then uh, it will be a little bit different because in UTF-8, the U with the uh, diuresis, so umlaut, uh, doesn't uh, fit into one single uh, byte, and you need two bytes. So there are two bytes that will uh, save or that will encode your U with the uh, umlaut. If your last name is Chinese, of course, this is not a last name. This means ni hao, so hello. 
uh, the two Chinese characters are encoded uh, as six uh, bytes in UTF-8. So it works one way, the other way around. And if you know that your uh, bytes are in UTF-8, you can read them and decode and you will get your original Chinese character. Uh, but there are also other encodings uh, apart from uh, UTF-8. UTF-8 is great because it works for most for Unicode and for most characters that we need. But earlier, 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 there was ASCII. And ASCII knows only seven bits and only 128 uh, encoding possibilities. So you, there is a limited number of characters that you can encode directly. In the uh, case of Chuck Norris, it works. But if uh, your name is Müller, then you will need something like Latin 1 uh, encoding. Latin 1 or ISO uh, 88591 uh, is encoding that works perfect, very well for some Western European languages like German, French, Spanish, Italian, um, and other languages. Um, and it knows or it, it uh, has the information that these several characters can be encoded into the respective bytes. But uh, the U with umlaut has a place in, uh, in this um, Latin 1 uh, encoding table, uh, but many other characters don't have, because you have quite limited number of uh, possible characters that can be encoded. My last name, Shivi, which means gray-haired in Czech and Slovak, it comes from Czechoslovakia, um, cannot be encoded in Latin 1. In uh, the languages like Czech, Slovak, Polish, Hungarian, and in other Central European languages, uh, we have uh, used uh, Latin 2, which has which knows some other characters on the place of uh, the characters that are encoding in Latin 1. So the sh, the s with Karen, has a place there, but it, it is not encoded in Latin 1. It, you need uh, to encode it in Latin 2. And then, living in Germany, um, sometimes I get packages, post, mail from some German companies that do such stuff. And you see that I think they have some problem with my last name because on the web form, my last name is written correctly, but on the on the sticker, on the package, um, it uh, the sh is replaced by a question mark. And now I just wanted to know, why is it like that? Because sh and question mark, they look quite similar, but that's not a problem. How is it possible that they encoded my sh as a question mark. Um, in uh, Python, if I encode, or in Python, if I encode my last name Shadivi into Latin 2, it will work. But if I tell them, uh, encode it as a Latin 1, uh, then of course it will not find the S with uh, Karen, the Sh character, and it will raise an exception. Unicode encode error, I, I don't know the Sh because it is not contained uh, within Latin 1 uh, character set. Uh, Okay, but I receive a package. I don't receive an exception. So probably there is some possibility how they do fix it the way that it works and that I get my package, although with a wrongly printed name. And yes, uh, that's uh, there is a function or the, the parameter in uh, Python uh, where you can encode to Latin 1. And if there is an error, you replace the character. Default for errors is a raise, to raise an exception, as in the first case. But um, if I tell it, uh, if there is an error, replace it, it will be replaced by a question mark. Why they chose a question mark, no idea. It's, it is not configurable. But there is a small hack uh, that gives you the possibility to replace your um, character, uh, missing character, by something else. But this is probably how that big company um, encoded my last name and converted it to Latin 1. And uh, that's uh, where the question mark comes from. And uh, you can write a short uh, one-liner in uh, Python for example, like this, uh, where I say, if there is an error, use the uh, replace randomly function. And uh, in that case, it will just uh, put a random number. You can write something else, some funny character that will be printed there instead of a missing character. And in this case, uh, I got a five instead of S. Well, a five looks uh, more like sh than a question mark looks like sh. Well, that's, that's fine. Oh, and there are some other big companies uh, in Germany. One. I will not say, tell the name, but they have a beautiful big uh, trains uh, all around the country. Um, on the country, on the mail that I get, on uh, the customer card, uh, on the online tickets, 
they manage to use always a different uh, encoding and always uh, to uh, write uh, my last name differently. Uh, there is another big uh, company that has uh, big uh, airplanes. Uh, uh, when I want to buy a ticket uh, and I write my last name, they tell me you can only enter letters in the adult's last name field. Hey, my last name consists of letters. What is a letter? In uh, Python 3, you can uh, call a variable, you can name a variable um, using any character that looks like a letter. So, for example, I could do something like that. But I cannot name a variable, for example, a question mark or a smiley. Where does Python know that sh is a letter and question mark or a smiley or some uh, arrow is uh, not, um, not a letter? Uh, if you import uh, the standard Unicode data library, uh, there are some functions that uh, will give you the possibility to investigate, to inspect um, how the characters look like. So now I have a few characters, uh, A, a umlaut, uh, uh, the sharp S, uh, lowercase, uppercase, yes, there is uppercase, uh, sharp S, uh, ash, ash, uh, and the dot and the question, um, a smiley. And then I ask for the category and for the name. And what you see in the first uh, column is the character, then you see the two characters, L L L U Z S P O S O, and this is the category of the character. Uh, if it starts with an L, it means it is a letter, and then if there is a U or L, it means it is an uppercase letter or a lowercase letter. Z S P O S O R different other categories for uh, symbols, for numbers, uh, digits, uh, and so on. And then you see the name. So, for example, Latin small letter A. Uh, this is the list of all categories, and actually every character in the Unicode table has a category, belongs to some category, and then uh, there is a possibility to uh, access the information behind that. So if it looks like a letter, I can use it as a letter. If it looks like a number, I can probably get the decimal value of this uh, number or of this character, even if the character uh, doesn't look like a number, if it is a, a Roman uh, numeral or some other alphabetical numeral. Uh, there is the character maps uh, app that will also give you all the information uh, about the character and where you can see also the, the category and the name and all the characteristics. Case folding. Case folding is uh, the possibility to switch between lowercase and uppercase letters, which works in Latin alphabet, in uh, Greek alphabet, in uh, Cyrillic alphabet. It doesn't work in Chinese. It works in some alphabets. But in our case, uh, we need it. So if I have some characters in lowercase, I dot upper, I get the uppercase version, and vice versa. Uh, there are some exceptions. So for example, the sharp S, uppercase version of the sharp S, there is an uppercase sharp S, but uh, it will... Python converts it to uppercase S, S, which is probably wrong. And the other way around, if I have uppercase sharp S and I convert it to lowercase, then it will work. But it is not. This is not a symmetrical operation. So and uh, yes, and uh, there, this works for all characters that are lowercaseable or uppercaseable. And but. It is, doesn't work always correctly. So we have seen here the case of Shafas. And there is also one other case that um, is uh, contained even within ASCII, even within the basic 26 uh, letters uh, of uh, the Latin alphabet. And this is something that we don't see as a problem, but we broke it to some other languages. And that is the case of I. You see the difference between lowercase i and the uppercase i. There is one tiny difference, the dot. There is lowercase i with dot and uppercase i without dot. And there is a language, at least one or several or family of languages, that distinguish between these two i's. It is, for example, Turkish. Uh, the i with dot is pronounced as e, and the i without dot, dotless i, is pronounced as e. And now imagine that if you want to have, to, if you have some Turkish text, not you, but the, your Turkish colleagues, um, and uh, they want to convert between uppercase, lowercase, they, it can be wrong. And sometimes it can be so wrong that even the word can mean something different if it is with upper, with a, a dot or without dot. So the, our Turkish colleagues, they have actually to make a workaround. Uh, they have to import ICU, which is the International Components for Unicode Library, and then 
import a locale and then convert it this way. So that's a little bit more complicated. Normalizing is something that you probably don't see usually, but this is the normalizing, this is the decomposition of characters into their parts. For example, we have the German word süß, which means sweet. Uh, and I have two words that look the same. The first one, three characters, the second one is normalized NFD form. What does that mean? I get, take uh, again my small tiny script uh, that uh, shows me all the characters uh, within the string. And you see that the first um, word contains three characters, the second one contains four characters. And the difference is with this U with umlaut. In the first case, it is U with umlaut as a one character, Latin small letter U with diaresis. In the second case, it is it, there are two characters. The first one is Latin small letter U, and the second one is a combining diaresis. And one thing you see that the column in the second word, this uh, row with uh, this line with combining diaresis is um, has moved a little bit by one character. That means that the combining diaresis doesn't have a width, so it is it it has zero width. It is just it is just uh, glued to the character before, and then it looks like a U with umlaut. And there are plenty of combining uh, characters that allow you to combine. You can actually make a sharp S with uh, the arises on the top uh, or combine any char most characters with uh, other combining characters. This is an example. This is a stack overflow answer to the question uh, how to parse uh, HTML with regular expressions. Of course you can't. But what you see at the end, these are just characters with plenty, plenty of random combining characters just after them. And it looks cool. Alphabetic sorting. Um, there is built-in function in uh, Python sorted that will get a list or a string, this, which is uh, actually a list of uh, characters, and will sort them according to some rules. If you have some numbers, great, that's easy. But if you have characters, it will sort them. And what you see is uh, that in the example that at the beginning I have capital, like uppercase AOU, then lowercase AOU, then with umlaut uppercase, then sharp S, then AOU lowercase, then I have some Central European, like Czech, Slovak, sh, and then the sharp s uppercase it comes at the end. So actually, the num the the order looks doesn't look very natural, and this is because all these uh, characters are converted to Unicode code points, like the numbers, like their position in the Unicode table, and uh, then they are sorted according to them. And sharp s uh, uppercase came later, so it is at the end, and. This is not what you would like to see as an alphabetical list uh, in a fold list uh, or a list of some names or so. Uh, we want to sort now according to the German language because uh, sorting according every, to every language it may be a little bit different. So we import the locale and we say our locale is German and we sort uh, these characters uh, using the locale uh, strings x form um, uh, method and it will look better. Because I have first I have both A's, then I have A with uh, umlaut, and then I have B. So this is how it should look like uh, in a German dictionary or in a German phone list or list of names. Um, but if I have a Swedish uh, user, for them seeing A with umlaut between A and B is not natural. Swedish expect the umlaut uh, characters at the end of alphabet. After that. So if you have the Swedish alphabet, it should be at the end. In Hungarian, uh, there is the ch sound, which is written as CS, and CS doesn't get between CR and CT. CS is as a special character between C and D. So this word cheaper, which means uh, sharp uh, as a chili, cheaper uh, um, comes after all the C uh, words. In Czech and Slovak, we have also the ch sound, but we write it with C with uh, Karen. We have ch, you have seen already in my last name, which is S with Karen. Z, d, plenty of characters, like Slovak alphabet has 43 letters with all the possible umlauts. And another thing is, for example, the CH, which is the ch sound, uh, which is also alphabetically between H and I. But there are also exceptions. If you have a, two words uh, glued together, and the first one ends with a C, and the second one starts with an H, it is not H, it is CH, and then it is sorted differently. In French, 
this is even more interesting. Uh, they sort something from the beginning of the word, some other things sort from the end of the word. So usually they, if, when they sort words, they sort everything according to ASCII form. Um, and then they look if there are some like these four words that have the same ASCII form, they look at the end, at the last syllable. And then you see the first two words, they have on the E, they have nothing. And the other two words, they have uh, accent aigu. So first come uh, the the two words where, where uh, the last syllable is without accent, and then uh, the words with uh, the last syllable with accent. And then within these two, they sort according to the penultimate syllable, so the before last, and so on, and so on. So that's that's French. That's okay. I have seen their, if you have seen their uh, keyboard layout, uh, you understand why they are doing it like that. Uh, the problem is that locale is connected to the process. So it means if you do something like this, like set locale uh, in your code, then if it is a library or if it is a web server with plenty of users, uh, with plenty of uh, threads uh, running, uh, this will change the locale of the process. And this is not what you want, because if you have two users, one of them clicks, I want to see sorted uh, list according to German rules, to uh, Swedish rules, then they will just break it to each other. And there's a problem because locale is connected to the process. But we have seen already this ICU um, uh, library that allows you to use the locales as objects, object oriented, and that allows you to do something in your corner, in your method, and you use all these things, but the whole process is not uh, uh, changed um, by that. Uh, another possibility, which is much more lightweight, is uh, PYUCA um, that uh, you see that sorts, that sorts nicely, but that sorts according to some English rules um, because it doesn't define which locale it has, like which language. So they have some better sorting than the default uh, sorting according to Unicode list, but this is, this is not optimal for every language. But if you need one general list, you can go with uh, PYUCA. Now, regular expressions, if you have a problem, use regular expressions, now you have two problems. But anyway, uh, let's say that we want to extract uh, from this verb München, uh, München uh, 1, 2, 3. München is the German way for Munich, uh, German way, name for Munich. Uh, München 1, 2, 3, and we want to extract the name München. So, uh, if I uh, import uh, regular expressions and then I ask for all characters A to Z, A to Z, then it will see the M, capital M, and then HEN. It doesn't see the U because it doesn't belong to the list of A to Z. Uh, there is backslash W, uh, which uh, finds the U uh, umlaut. Uh, so it finds the word München, but it also finds um, all digits. And I don't, I'm not interested in digits. I just want to see München. So how can I extract München uh, in a regular expression? Uh, the research party library regex uh, that works uh, like identically to the standard RE, uh, but that has uh, some more functionality. And uh, in this case, that's um, the possibility to uh, ask for backslash P, uh, which is a special character from the Unicode uh, list. And uh, in the L, uh, the capital L, as you remember, is the category for letters. So if you have L, it's any letter. L, U would be uppercase. L, L would be lowercase letter. And this is how you can actually use uh, regular expressions to find words that contain some other characters uh, that are beyond uh, ASCII. So I came here for Python, but I said for the names. So that was the programming part. Now let's have a look at the names. I cannot see you, but I, you can just uh, raise your hand uh, if your name fits into first name, last name category. Mine fits. But maybe there are some people here who have some middle name or that have some patronymic surname, metronymic surname, like in Spanish, Juan uh, Guterres, uh, da, 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 um, so these are names that are, this is not last name, there are two last names or two uh, surnames. Uh, maybe there, are, there is someone from Hungary or from Eastern Asia who has last name first and then first name last. Uh, are there any popes or queens or kings here? maybe some, somebody who has only a name uh, or for example from the nordic countries uh, if in iceland someone is called sigur and their father is johan uh, so this person is called sigur johansson 
but uh, Johansson is not the last name. Johansson is the patronymic name. So this means that Sigur Johansson, you can call them Sigur, you can call them Mr. Sigur Johansson, but you don't call them Mr. Johansson. And in the alphabetic list, they are not under uh, J, like Johansson, they are under S, Sigur Johansson. Um, there are main names like different forms of, na of names. So for example, um, in Czech and Slovak, uh, the names for the masculine and the feminine forms of names are different. My name is Shegivi. All the female members of my family are called Shegiva, gray-haired. But this is the grammatical form uh, of uh, the female form, the feminine form of the grammatical form for this adjective. Uh, all the substantive, if uh, all substantive in Czech and Slovak, uh, if someone is called something like Müller, uh, the females, women, they are called Müllerova. There comes an ova at the end. And this is not only for Czech and Slovak names, it is also for other names. So if you read Czech or Slovak newspaper, you will see Angela Merkelova. The Sometimes Merkelova is still okay because Merkel sounds like a name, last name, uh, that would be acceptable also in Czech and Slovak. But there are also some names uh, from Africa, from Asia, that are grammatically not compatible with our language, and that get always the OVA at the end. And of course, if you have some title, phone on two, or some academical title, which uh, is a part of your name, then this is also more complicated uh, to decide whether uh, how to write it in a form. Because if a form asks for a first name and last name, and where do you write your title or uh, the, the, your second name or patronyming, metronyming, or the parts of your name? So actually, what I propose, suggest, is to have one form for full name, where you write the name as it is, official, on your passport. And then, how should we call you? So, in my case, full name Miroslav Shedivy, and you can call me Miro. And there are some other people who make it really clear on how you should call them and how you should write their names. Um, yeah, this is what I see sometimes when I write my name uh, on some forms uh, here in Germany. Uh, please enter characters from the European character set only. What is European character set? Shedivi is a Central European, Czech or Slovak, uh, name, and it contains only characters from the Central uh, European or from the European character set. Bitte geben Sie einen gültigen, vollständigen Namen ein. Please enter a full valid name. Eh, hey, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. My name is valid. A name of a person cannot be invalid. So if you program something that has to do with names, I'm not speaking about GDPR, I'm speaking about common sense. Don't assume anything. Don't put random limit on the length of, uh, of a name. There are short names, there are long names, there are very long names. There are names that are so long that even if they make a typo on Wikipedia, uh, that person won't uh, notice it. Don't use stop words. If it is a stop word in your language, it is probably a perfectly valid name in another language. As I told, family members don't have necessarily the same family name. In my case, all the names in Czech, Slovak, Polish, and other languages. Different transcriptions from non-Latin alphabets. So, of course, if you have the Russian name of Cheho, every European language is written differently, the same with Chinese. On the other hand, uh, I went to Russia twice with the same passport and I got two visa. And on the visa, there was always my whole name in Latin and in the Cyrillic alphabet. And on those two pages, uh, the, the transcription, the Cyrillic transcription of my last name was different. So also the Russian uh, officials, they uh, see my last name and they try to write it somehow to transcribe it into the Cyrillic alphabet. So it works the other way around. Uh, the men change their family names too. So if in your form you ask for the maiden name or name, it's probably not what you want because there are plenty of men who after, um, after they get married, um, they change uh, their family name. One letter name is probably not an initial. So Benoit Belanda, Nadelbro, the French guy uh, who did uh, quite a lot of uh, beautiful stuff uh, with uh, um, uh, with fractals. Uh, the B is not an initial; it's just a B. So probably everything that is printable is probably fine. So you have to expect anything in the name. 
Uh, if you know, have heard about, uh, about this guy, Christopher Nall, hello, I'm Mr. Nall, my name makes me invisible to computers. If your program has problems with that, I'm sorry for that. Uh, someone uh, tried to, or bought um, customized uh, in, license plate for their car, and uh, they wanted to have Nall on it. The guy thought, hey, that's great. If I get a speed ticket, they are not going to be able to uh, to attribute the speed ticket uh, to my license plate because there is written null. And at the end, uh, he received all the speed tickets uh, in the county uh, that uh, were not attributed, that were not attributable uh, to some license plate because it just was mapped to null. So he received <laughs> way too much. Uh, if your database has problem with uh, a guy named uh, Robert uh, Drop Table Students, okay, see you in the Q and A. Addresses, streets, and cities. That's also something interesting because there, it's like names. Uh, if you are in Germany, you know what is the most common name of a street in Germany? Yes, it's Einbahnstraße. No, just joking. Einbahnstraße means one-way road, but many foreigners think that it is a name of a, of a street, and if they, when they park a car, they just write down, I am in the Einbahnstraße, and they, then they need uh, quite a long time to, get, uh, to find their car again. Um, but you can see many uh, US uh, lists of um, uh, directories of companies uh, from Germany uh, is the concept of Hauptstrabe because their OCRs probably, or some other uh, programs, uh, are not able to identify the Schaff SS, and they uh, write it uh, as, a as a uppercase B. The names of the places, they can be very short, like the O uh, somewhere in Scandinavia, or the E, Y uh, somewhere in France. Uh, the inhabitants, they call themselves uh, Y. Uh, so if you live in a place like this and then you get uh, some control question question like uh, what is your mother's maiden name or what is the place of birth and it says oh you have to enter at least six characters no don't do that and there are some places like that are a little bit longer or so you need really much more place uh, space and you don't have to stop after 10, 15, 20, or 30 characters, because the places have really long names. And sometimes the places then even don't uh, need names, because uh, somewhere in Iceland, uh, you can just uh, draw a map uh, on, the, on the envelope, and it will arrive. Uh, there are plenty of uh, things that you have to think about when uh, you are uh, doing programming something with names, um, and that can surprise you. Uh, there are some pages like this, uh, falsehoods so programmers believe about names. I invite you just read them and you will see uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting stuff that you have not uh, thought about uh, earlier. Your name is invalid? No, your name is not invalid. Please, as a developer, you respect the names of your users because their names are not valid. Don't break the locale, so import ICU if you are in Python. Um, convert from bytes to string as soon as possible and from strings to bytes as late as possible. So work with strings the whole time, that's cool. UTF-8 is cool, Python 3 is cool, be cool too, and use Python 3 and UTF-8. And if you tell the user your name is invalid, you will land on the Twitter account, your name is valid. Actually, this is also a limit of Twitter because you can have an account with maximum 15 characters, so your name is invalid wouldn't fit there. So there is a Twitter account, your name is valid and be nice. Thank you very much. Miro, thanks for your interesting talk. Thank you. It was a pleasure to hear uh, what kind of problems you can have with uh, names and encodings and uh, how, how you can uh, circumvent it uh, as a programmer and you really should circumvent it. Uh, um, I have some questions from the audience and um, they go specific to uh, non-letter characters. So, um, Which characters? Non-Latin? 
non-letter characters like the uh -huh. uh, apostrophe and um ah. uh, yep. it's called m dash yep um and and what do you think about um they should be allowed in names how do you handle that and um at least in passports they look uh, it looks like they are allowed if if they are a part of a um, name of a person so they are valid yes apostrophes and uh, 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 numbers maybe yeah all of that should be allowed uh, so yes as i thought uh, you have to accept almost anything and deal with it Okay, these uh, were the questions from the audience. Really, thank you for your talk. Um, it was interesting for us all. And sorry for the problems with the stream we had. Um, if you missed something from the stream, um, just go to the recording afterwards. Um, there will be a full recording of uh, this session, including uh, questions and answers. Thanks again, Miro. For... Thank you very much. And, and have an nice the Congress. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. Bye. RC3.